Oh, yeah, I just turn the volume back, <clears throat> back on. Pull up like an hour and a half. Yeah. Got the new Paladin to Year Seven update. Champions, welcome to Year Seven. Oh my God, what is this quality? Oh, okay. This year, our goal is to honor Paladin's long and vital. Horde, that's pretty cool. While evolving, what players can expect from the realm going forward. From the return of trials to large-scale item store changes and a whole lot of dragons, let's hop right into it. That's awesome. Hi all, it's Chamomile, your UI UX designer here at Evil Mojo. Trials is back after a year on hiatus, now reworked and improved. We appreciate players' patience as the team dug in and pushed to truly redefine what a modern version of Trials could look like. From the moment players enter the Trials menu, you'll be met with familiar sites with major changes. Quests are now included within the Trials menu, allowing you to track all activities from one convenient location. Swapping over to the Trial Specific tab, you'll see we have remodeled the map and menu to be easier to navigate. There are eight hubs, seven of which contain nine challenges. These challenges have been revisioned to make them more freeform and fun to complete, allowing players more room to express themselves. In addition, the ticketing system has been completely removed. Now, whenever a trial hub opens, all of its challenges are available to be progressed and completed at once. No need to specifically unlock. You'll begin earning progress right away. Oh, that's the remaining pretty cool. hub is a completionist hub which rewards unique cosmetics for those who manage to complete previous challenges and hubs. This means grinding out every new set of trials can lead to more crystals, more rewards, and bragging rights. In addition, trials have become easier to track at the end of the match, with the list merged with quests to have a single clear view of everything you can do in the realm. We're so excited for players to get their hands on this. That's, I mean, that's that's cool. Also made Trials being back is cool. Pass, it gives run. more grind to the game. Let's you, let's people play the game more for more rewards. For the same crystal price. Crystal 36 the levels. Event pass is also adjusted to have an XP curve more befitting of the earlier and later rewards. Our I think the, I think the pass in this game just lacks. There's not many rewards. Plus, it takes a long time to level up. Plus, the rewards aren't that worth it. Meaning, the money you spend on the pass isn't really that useful. Like, you don't really get anything. We're introducing special chests of each cosmetic type. These chests will contain the same cosmetics we always award in each new event pass, but now, which you unlock when, is up to the rolls. The eventful skins chest will contain four new skins, two versions with two color schemes as you become accustomed to. Cosmetics of different types, such as avatars, sprays, and death cards will also have their own chests. To be clear, these chests only contain the rewards for the current event pass, and players will unlock exactly the number of chests as there are new cosmetic rewards in the pass. This change makes the way you earn your mm. content and paladins more consistent via chests and also allows more flexibility in how our event passes reward players. We've also made event pass rewards more generous, including 50 more crystals and 60,000 more gold each pass. Speaking of cosmetics, here's a sneak peek I mean, of the upcoming skins. Adventure across the realm. Grobus Grover is a dragon whose parents encourage him to That's a really cool skin. Explore his place in the world. That's an yeah, awesome Grover skin. He is determined to make a difference in fights he's only begun to discover along his journey. Chaos That's Grover's, really cool. Meanwhile, is a version of Grobus that follows down a darker path in pursuit of riches that define a It's an event pass skin though, so I don't know how many people power, will get it. Flameborn this is a cool omen skin too. Much more experience in traversing the realm, offering his help to the highest bidder. His skills can seem wasted on such work, but he still has a kind heart. The, the thing with the event pass, at least in my opinion, looking at other games' designs, like let's just say Overwatch, um, it's like there isn't that many rewards in this game. On top of, it takes a long time to level up. On top of, you can't even get enough crystals to buy the next one, which is usually the the pass feature. Okay, let's see this. Away from the item store. Listening to player feedback and experimenting with how to both Sentinel, bring back beloved aspects of the older item store while making this unbound, next era fresh and enjoyable for all players. Armor plating, that arcane journey boarding, led us to where we are now, as we're making the largest bath. item shop change since Tigron's Tale. Use the damage you take from in-hand weapons. Item options to the store. Twenty-four percent. Right. Each type of item now has been expanded to take five, from abilities. alongside a new store look to better display those items. These new items also come with some massive shakeups of the existing lineup. So let's go Again, a 150 table. health shield for five or seconds on elimination. Type, Haven has been split into two. Introducing armor plating and arcane warding. Two okay, defense this hasn't been changed. Familiar effects in new ways. 
Oh, wait, does not include slurs. Knockouts are not good. In hand Increase the effectiveness of shit. Oh! Taken from abilities. That's a huge buff to Guardian. I don't think it does much, though, but that's a huge buff to Guardian. And effects cleaner. These both scales this does look a lot nicer. To feel even more impactful. Meanwhile, Resilience has been quite a strong buy, regardless of composition, due to the prevalence of crowd control effects. We still want these frustrating effects to be counterable, but felt a similar dynamic would make CC feel more engaging, so we're splitting it into two new items, Sentinel and Unbound. Sentinel will provide players with a small shield on elimination, while also protecting players from slows and knock effects. Unbound, meanwhile, counters all the other crowd control so it's just a massive uh, snowball ability. item guardian has also received a significant buff to closely fall behind wrecker allowing teams to counter buy and weigh risks versus rewards wrecker As got changes are made to price buff stealth this update illuminate has now been retired after a long and infrequently purchased life so did deft hands in utility most items so are the items minor balance uh based on the larger item economy, nerf with prices coming down for most However, the new utility big nerf to kill to heal we've not allowed before. Buff to veteran. Ward is an item that nerf to rejuve to challenge players to make smart choices as to if or when to purchase it. 10 credits every 5 credits seconds. Gain 15 credits well on getting credit an That's massive. This means horde can be used to come back from credit deficits or snowball into strong middle games. That is However, actually it massive. Does take up one of your four precious item slots, so be careful not to overinvest and end up weaker in the late game. Healing as an item type has had a very volatile history, and we aim to address that by both adopting meditation is cheap, as well as giving some much needed love to our weaker items. Life Rip and Veteran have both been given small price increases, but significant buffs to their effects, as Life Rip is now doubling in strength and Veteran is increasing to 7%. What? Meanwhile, Hilda Heal has been the strongest wow. in the type for a while. And we want to That's crazy. That made more sense for that. Kills heal what you, you and eliminations heal you and the ally who got the kill. Heal you for the same amount, but eliminations heal you and the ally who got the killing blow. This version is much more expensive. At we see meditation heal for an additional 7.5% of your max health every 325 credits. So players will have to truly capitalize on its value. It also does not true heal. You're welcome. This new healing item is a twist on a class. It's just old that. Meditation joins as the cheapest option of the type with a focus on healing out of combat. It'll be good in low elo, Remember, but in high elo, it's not going to do anything. Of max health every 0.25 seconds, emphasizing optimizing when you escape and how long you can stay out of the fray. Not to be left out. Maybe it could have it like price increase to balance its out usefulness, out. but... Finally, the offense type sees some price reductions of Deft Hands and Wrecker, as well as a brand new version of an aggressive pass option, Trick. Yeah. Shot. This item enables players to go bonus to damage on elimination. Damage five seconds after elimination. What? We know this type of item hasn't made a ton of headway in the past, but with the split of Haven and some meta changes, this item feels like one that many can find value in. To accommodate all of this, we are raising the starting credit amount in Siege and similar queues to 500 credits. To allow for more flexibility. That's crazy. Purposes. 500? We're so excited to let players experiment and provide feedback on all... So as, as a, as a DPS, you, you could basically start uh, Sentinel Some Nimble or something. Making changes to the loadout screens over the past few updates. Three new loadouts? That's cool. The reasons why. Paladins is all about its customization. And for a long while, we have... Having nine total loadouts, that's actually kind of awesome. More builds into games. So we're expanding the amount of you can make a lot more builds to fit your different types of playstyles. Because before I was only six, but nine, I, uh, it's just like a quality of life change. That's cool. This year, our goal is to put out more frequent balance passes. Our first patch of the year focuses on several flames. More balance patches. That's good. That's uh, uh, that's awesome. The full list of changes will be online. But let's highlight a few of them now. Let's start with Caspian. Our beloved rogue has indeed been shredding. All right, this is the good stuff. So we are reining him in by reducing his damage and control capabilities. We are doing a partial revert of Caspian. Down to 20. From 6 .6, requiring his gun to use two ammo again. That's awesome. His tempo ability is replacing its stun with a slow and having its damage reduced. What? Caspian's ultimate, Storm of Blades, is also seeing a slight damage. Oh, this character is fucking dead. Measured cadence requires four ammo expended to activate again. 
and it's got some heft will no longer increase war's range. All of these come together. What? Caspian having fewer opportunities to be a rose's thorn in everyone's side. Oh, dude, this character is dead. This character is dead. Has not been the executioner everyone fears recently. So we are. Can we not buff this character? To start, we're making several changes to his heavy SMG. Burst mode damage is increased to. Burst and mag buffs if auto shift balance. Mag mode damage is increased to 235 per bullet. That's good. Its effective range reduced to 70. Okay. Heavier damage fall off past that range. That's good. Mode is getting a slight it makes him a close rate, like a, a literal close range assassin. Seven spring loaded talent is getting its cooldown reduction on explosive dodge removed entirely, and we're rebuffing his the night card back to 0.4 scaling to compensate. We are okay, that's not bad. removing the damage penalty, charge penalty, and cooldown adjustment from Seven's overcharge talent to allow some of his older playstyles to flourish again. Uh, we're hoping these changes I don't know. will allow Seven to enter matches. As a cerebral terror, I don't know. Our princess Leon has not committed presence for a while now, and we wanted to grace her with some changes. We're that buffing really Leon. More modern paladins. I think but Leon's fine. To and her heirloom rifle is gaining both damage and effective range. We've heard concerns around backline damage champions lacking luster, and this should help Leon. I mean, this is good. Damage characters, characters aren't exactly great right now. We'll continue to monitor our damage class throughout 2024 and see how we can I think these are good buffs, but I don't think she was the one who needed the buffs. Who is situationally strong but lacking in consistency. Ooh, term term buffs are great. Term has been weak for a long time now. Him for using different parts of his kit more often. I just want to know what it is. will now increase power siphon's recharge rate by 25% for 4 seconds. This effect can stack up to five times, potentially giving Terminus a significant uptime increase on his main defensive. <laughs> That's really good. And finally, Ying took charge with true healing on her ultimate and shattered the realm. She should Here keep the true healing. On this and have removed this effect from Illusory Rift, mm. but we still wanted to give it some punch. Instead, Illusory Rift will now cleanse allies and give one second of crowd control immunity on activation. This means that it does remove anti-healing effects from allies on cast, you can still reapply I don't know. I think this was put. I just think it makes her bad again. Or not bad, but not good. She needs that true healing, or else her ult just doesn't do much. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more info as the Wild Horde update approaches. PTS will be live sometime next week, and we'll have more info to share about future updates, including the next rank season and more coming in 7.2. See you all in the round.